In problem 15, we're given the equation 3x squared minus 5x plus 2 equals 0. So these numbers, the 3 and the minus 5 and the 2, are our values for a, b, and c. So a is equal to 3, b is equal to negative 5, and c is equal to 2. So those are the numbers we put into the quadratic formula. So x is negative b. Negative b will be a positive 5 because b is negative 5. So x is equal to 5, that's negative b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And b squared will be 25, and it's minus 4 times 3 times 2. So that's 4ac. And all of that is over 2a, so 2 times 3. Now we just need to work that out. We'll simplify this expression and end up with our answer. So first let's simplify what's under the radical there. 25 minus 4 times 3 times 2. Well, 4 times 3 is 12, and 12 times 2 is 24. So 25 minus 24 is 1. So we have 5 plus or minus the square root of 1 over 6. And the square root of 1 is just 1. So this is 5 plus or minus 1 over 6. And both of those work out to ordinary numbers. 5 plus 1 is 6 over 6 is just 1. So 1 is one of our answers. And then we'll do 5 minus 1, which is 4. 4 over 6 is another answer, and that simplifies to 2 thirds. So those are our two answers. Again, a quadratic equation typically has two solutions, and we get both of those solutions from the quadratic formula because of the plus or minus. And those are our two answers. In number 16, a is equal to 8, b is equal to 3, and c is equal to 5. So we'll put those numbers into the quadratic formula. x is equal to negative b, which is negative 3 in this case, plus or minus the square root of b squared. b squared will be 9 minus 4 times a times c. So that's 4 times 8 times 5, all over 2a. So that's 2 times 8. So now we start to simplify this, but something happens in this case. Negative 3 plus or minus the square root of, if we have 9 minus 4 times 8 times 5, well, what is that 4 times 8 times 5? Well, the 4 times the 5 is 20, and 20 times 8 is 160. So we have 9 minus 160, which is negative 151 all over 16. And the thing to note here is that we have a negative number under the radical. And we can't get a real number solution as a result of that. We can't take a negative square root, so we're not going to end up with answers for x like we did in the previous, the previous problem. We're just going to write no real solution. And by real, we mean real numbers. There's no solutions that are real numbers. It turns out there are complex number solutions to this. We can take the square root of a negative number if we uh, take the possibility of complex number answers into account. But that's typically done in an Algebra 2 class. And we won't review that here. We'll just write that there's no real number solution.